In the following tutorials, we're going to take a look at using InDesign CS4. Now we're going to begin by, by looking at just the interface of the new application, just to show you some of the new things that are there. If you're familiar with InDesign before, there's some really nice features that have been added. One of the things that you'll notice that's very different about this one is this bar at the top. Now some of this stuff is not going to really apply until we create a document, so let's create a new document and just use the default OK. Um, we'll talk about the document settings in the next tutorial. But um, you'll notice that there's some really nice view options and other zoom levels and also Adobe Bridge here at the top. With the zoom options, we can actually zoom right up there at the top. Not that we'd use that a whole lot, but it's there. But we do have the ability to see things like um, different um, guides and smart guides and baseline grids here. Also we have the ability to go to preview mo mode at the top. Now this particular preview mode versus screen mode we'll use quite often and you can also access that at the bottom of your main tool panel as well. So that's a really common one to use. Then we have the ability to arrange documents which I've never used but it's kinda cool. Anyway, um, Underneath that, you'll see that we have our traditional menus that we're used to seeing, of course, and a lot of the options are not going to be available until we actually have objects selected. So um, if we do not have an object selected, then we may be setting up um, defaults for the different types of things that we're creating. So just be aware of that. Now, one of the things that's really important here is the the window menu and you'll notice the window menu has a lot of options now InDesign CS4 has tons of panels and knowing what all these panels do um, is something that will take a long time to learn because there's just so many different things and so many different capabilities of this application so one of the ways that um, they've tried to help you is by setting up different workspaces that have lots of different features to them so getting started is a workspace which is a really simplified one then we have our essentials which adds a few more things um, then we have our advanced one and this is the one that I'm going to use the most, the advanced one, because it has most of the features that I use typically. Then we have the ability to go to things like printing and proofing, which have some flattener previews, trapping, attributes, um, separations preview, things that you might not use very often. Um, we also have typography, which is kind of a robust environment for dealing with type. And we have things like story, hyperlinks, effects, text wrapping, glyphs, all sorts of text oriented things. And we also have interactivity, which is cool. And the interactive one has things like hyperlinks, page transitions, and buttons, and even sample buttons. And these are used for interactive PDFs or something like that. Now, you'll notice that I just um, opened up one of those panels. You can open up a panel just by clicking on the name, or you can open up the um, all the panels at once by expanding the panels. Now that's pretty wide, so th that's not going to be really effective. That group of panels may be really wide because of the sample buttons there. You can adjust things back if needed. Um, the problem with this is, of course, it's hard to see everything about all of your panels at once. So um, I go to the advanced panels and, and often have the panels that I want um, right there. Um, of course, to be able to see panels are, that are below, you have to click on the name of that panel and be aware that anytime you're within a panel, that panel has a, um, I guess, a menu over on the right hand side and that menu only works for the panel that I'm ter typically on or currently on. If I click on swatches, then that particular panel is for swatches or that menu is for swatches. If I'm on gradients, then that particular um, menu is just for gradients. Right now I don't have any gradients there so all it does is hide and show options. If I go to strokes you'll see that it changes a little bit about my stroke styles and I can add stroke styles. So there's a lot of exploration that you need to do of course to find out where these panels are. Now these panels also relate to tools that you have above so I want to talk about this new tool panel that's right here. This panel is your options for whatever you currently have selected. Now that's really important. Right now I don't have anything selected so it's really about setting up defaults. 
And um, if I have something that is created, let, like a frame here, you'll notice that when I go back to my black arrow and select that frame, I get the options for that particular frame. Now one of these options, like on the far right, is the ability to have text wrapping, and I know that by the way it looks. The problem is that I don't really have any ability to edit any of the options about text wrapping here, I just have the ability to use that text wrapping. So you do need to know what these icons relate to to bring up the appropriate panel in order to see the options for text wrapping. So you'll see that as I click on the different icons on the far right in this options panel it will actually um, reflect changes in the text wrapping dialog box where I can modify how that text wrapping is used. So you do know, need to know the relationship of these icons to other elements in InDesign and, and that just takes some experience to get used to. Otherwise you use things as they are defaults in the defaults. Now one of the things I also want to point out of course is about using text. So if you are in the text um, object currently when you are on the type tool you'll see that my options will change to text and I also have paragraphs up there as well and then if I go to the black arrow of course that changes back to my um, my frame options instead of or my object ob options instead of my text options so you do need to be aware of the tool that you're on may show different options in the top depending on what your current context is so that's a really important thing to do now objects also have a context such as this frame that I currently have this text frame used to be just a regular rectangle until I clicked on it with the type tool this one has two basic context. It has the context of the object itself or the text inside. To demonstrate this I'm going to go to my swatches so I can see my different colors here and you'll notice that the same icon exists here object versus text as it appears in the main toolbar object versus text. Now it's really small here so I'm going to use the one in swatches and if I click on the object and then click on one of my colors it'll change the color of the frame. If I go to the type tool then click on a color it'll change the type inside so you do need to be aware of that difference because that context um, can really change the way that your object is going to work but that context did not change this option panel above that only changes depending upon what you currently have now you'll notice that when I am currently on a type tool it will actually select all the type for that entire object because I currently have the entire object selected. But we'll talk more about this when we start dealing with text um, in future tutorials. So um, go ahead and stop here, but I do want to point out that I'm go going to be using the advanced workspace most often. So I'm going to reset this back to its default which seems to be where it is closed on the right hand side because this will be what I use for most of my tutorials because it has the paragraph styles and character styles which I think and object styles which I think are absolutely essential for you to know about when you're working with InDesign because it's paragraph styles and character styles and object styles that defines using um, an, an application like this. So go ahead on to the next tutorial and we'll start looking at how to create documents.